Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress, my channel where I talk all about sewing and making clothes. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing really well. So today's video is going to be a sewing day video and it's a kind of recreate something from the high street type video as well. So basically I have a wedding reception to go to on Saturday and in true me style I have decided on Tuesday I'd like to sew a dress for this wedding reception. <laughs> so there has been a certain style of dress on the high street that has been catching my eye recently, let's say. So it's quite a long button down style midi or maxi dress with tears. I am sort of um, veering towards more of the straighter style that's around at the moment, but this particular dress that I wanted to sew for the wedding does have two tears. So it's a sleeveless dress, v-neck, button down with tears and it has a really cute little flutter sleeve um, at the shoulder as well. So I've seen this style around um, a few times recently and my mind has been worrying about how I could recreate something similar. To me this kind of style did um, ring a few bells about some patterns that I already had in my pattern stash that I could use to recreate something similar. So since I do have this dress that I want to get made for the wedding, I thought I would have a go at making something in this style. So I'll put in a couple of images of the kind of dress that I'm talking about so that you can see what I mean. But you can probably tell that it's a very me kind of dress. It's got that nice sort of relaxed shirt style. Um, I love a button down dress. I just think they're really pretty. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's got the lovely gathered tears as well. So the way that I am planning to recreate something similar to this kind of dress is to use three patterns really that I already own um, and they are the Darling Rangers dress by Megan Nielsen, I bet you couldn't have guessed that one could you? <laughs> the Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Company and the Lyra dress by Tilly and the Buttons. So here's my very battered copy of the Darling Rangers dress by Megan Nielsen. If you've watched my channel or if you've followed me for a long while you'll know how much I love this pattern. So I will put in a quick picture of the line drawings as well so that you can see the style of the dress if you're not familiar with it. But hopefully you can see that it's got that lovely v-neck shaping to it um, which is similar to the dresses that I've seen around on the high street and it's a style that I really love to wear. I just find wearing a v-neck if it's not too low it's just a really comfy style to wear. I really like to wear a v-neck. So for my version of this dress I'm actually just going to be taking the bodice pieces mainly. I'm also going to be using the skirt pieces as well but in a different kind of way. But that's how I will be recreating the bodice of my dress. So I want my dress to be quite long. I will be wearing heels for the wedding. I'm not quite sure how that's going to go because I'm not very um, familiar with wearing heels these days. <laughs> but I do have a nice chunky pair of heels that I should be okay to walk in for the wedding. So I do want to make this dress a little bit longer than I maybe normally would. So I want to make it almost maxi length really and I think that would look really nice with the button up style. So yeah for the bodice part of the dress I am going to be using the Darling Rangers pattern. But because this is going to be a sleeveless version of the pattern, I did need to make a couple of changes. So I apologise for the state of this pattern piece. I traced this out. It must have been a good five years ago now. So this is my traced off front bodice piece. So to make the dress sleeveless, something that you sometimes need to do with dress patterns is to take in the shoulder seam slightly. So with the Darling Ranges dress pattern and with probably most dress patterns that have sleeves, you'll find that your shoulders come out to sort of the very end of your shoulder here, or your shoulder seams I should say, will end at the kind of the end of your shoulder here. So they do come out quite far. If you're wearing a sleeveless dress, often you want your shoulder strap to be, to sit in slightly from there. So you want your dress strap to kind of end just over probably where your bra strap sits maybe. Obviously this is personal preference but for me that's where I wanted my sleeveless dress to sit. So I've made a few sleeveless versions of the Darling Rangers dress so I've already made the modification to this pattern that I need and all I did to change the pattern piece and make it into a sleeveless bodice was just simply to take the shoulder seam in by 1.5 centimeters. So hopefully you can see here <laughs> with my very battered pattern that I have these um, sort of slitted bits of paper here. So this is the original 
bodice piece that I traced off and this is where the armhole would normally be. But to make it sleeveless all I've done is just to mark in 1.5 centimeters from the shoulder seam here and I've graded from that point all the way down to the armhole using my pattern master. And then because I knew that I would be using this pattern again to make a sleeved version of the dress, I simply cut into the pattern piece up to the line that I'd traced to make it sleeveless and tucked the pieces of paper underneath. And that's worked really well. Obviously this is getting a bit battered and I probably do need to trace it out again at some point, but it's working okay at the moment. So to get my little flutter sleeve, so I want to add to this sleeveless maxi dress, I'm actually gonna be using the frill from another of my favorite dress patterns and that is the Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Company. So I do love this little frill on the Davenport dress. Uh, a few times when I've made the Davenport dress, I have actually left the frill off if I've been making the sleeves, but I have made a sleeveless version of the Davenport dress with the frill on, and I think it works really well that way. So I really like the style of this um, shoulder frill. So I'm just gonna steal that frill piece from that pattern, and I'm going to find a way to attach it to my Darling Ranges dress bodice. And then to make my tiered skirt, I'm going to be using the pieces from the Darling Rangers dress pattern. So the skirt pieces from that pattern as well. But I've just played around with the sizing of the skirt pieces. And the way that I got my measurements for my tiers was actually to refer back to a hack that I did of the Lyra dress pattern by tilling the buttons. So you may remember if you followed me a while that when I originally made the Lyra dress pattern, it was very long on me. And the tears looked a little bit odd because I needed to shorten it. So when I made my next version of the Lyra, which was slightly hacked, I played around with the tiered pieces so that I had a shorter top tier and then a longer bottom tier. And that worked really well and it suited me better because I'm quite petite. So I've just referred back to the measurements that I used when I hacked those pattern pieces. And I do have a blog post just explaining exactly how I did that and the measurements that I used. So if you are petite like me, I'm five foot three and a half. <laughs> um, I will link that blog post down below so that you can follow and use my measurements if you'd like to. So using the Darling Ranges dress pattern pieces for the skirt, all I've done is use those same pattern pieces but for my shorter skirt tier, I've actually shortened the Darling Ranges skirt piece. And then for the bottom tier of the dress, I've used the same pattern piece, but I've doubled it in width so that I have enough to gather in the bottom tier. I do have everything cut out already. I actually cut out yesterday. I much prefer to cut out on a day that I'm not gonna be sewing because I just find that better mentally. <laughs> I find it's a little bit too much if I cut and sew on the same day. So I cut all of this out yesterday and this is the fabric that I'm gonna be using. It's a navy floral viscose chalet, I think it is, from Minerva. It was reasonably priced actually. I think it was around eight pounds a meter. I thought it would suit the style of this dress really well. I will see how I get on and I'll catch up with you as I always do along the way. Something that I always like to do is before I start, I separate my pattern pieces and my cut pieces of fabric into sections. So I put all of my skirt pieces together and then my front pieces together and then all my little bits and pieces like my bias bindings and my ties and for this version of the dress my frills or in my little basket over there so that nothing escapes and gets lost. So I've done my stay stitching and I've done my darts now. I kind of feel as though I need to say something that I should have said in my introduction. And that is just that in my previous couple of videos, I have been talking about slow sewing and it's definitely something that I want to be better at. I do appreciate that today's video is not really very slow sewing focused because I am trying to make a dress <laughs> in pretty much a day or a day and a half maybe. Um, so, Please forgive me for that. I am still trying to be better at slow sewing, obviously for the purpose of this um, task, which is to get a dress sewn before Saturday for the wedding. Um, it's not gonna be particularly slow, 
but I am going to still take my time over it. I'm definitely not going to rush. I'm going to give myself time and enjoy the process. I do have quite a lot of sewing time today and I have allowed a bit more sewing time later in the week if I need to. So I just felt as though I needed to say that. Also, I have chosen patterns that I'm very familiar with. So I know that fingers crossed everything should fit okay and I know the sewing process so I haven't got to go through the whole sort of learning anything new or fitting too much or anything like that. And that's another reason why I thought these would be good patterns to use for a quick task like this when you just want to get something sewn and I think that that is kind of the beauty of being able to sew isn't it? Sometimes I do find it really fun actually to have a challenge like this to think if I haven't got anything to wear, what can I make myself for an occasion? I do wish sometimes I could think earlier about that kind of thing. I always seem to do it so last minute. Anyway, <laughs> I just thought I would say that. So next I am on to sewing the shoulder and side seams of the bodice. I do find that the Darling Ranger's dress comes together really nicely and quickly actually because before you know it you're actually attaching the skirt to the bodice because you do all of that sort of before you put any sleeves or anything on. It's just the way the pattern is put together but I do really like it and it feels as though it comes together quickly so that's what I'm going to do now. After sewing and finishing the bodice side seams, I was then on to sewing the tiers for the skirt. So here I'm just sewing together the side seams of both of my tiered skirt pieces and then I will need to gather them. Right, so I have sewn both of my tiers. So I have my top tier, which is quite a lot shorter than what the bottom tier would be. So I've sewn those together at the side seams. And then the way that the Darling Ranger's dress is constructed is that it has a button band that folds in. So you only gather up until the markings for the button band. So that's my top tier. And then I have a much larger, a much wider bottom tier. Ooh, you probably can't even see that. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to all this gathering, I tell you. <laughs> anyway, so I've done both of those tiers now. So what I'm going to do next is just run my gathering stitches and then I need to gather my top tier to my bodice and then my bottom tier to my top tier. So there is a lot of gathering ahead. I think I might put a YouTube video on or something <laughs> to watch while I'm doing that at the ironing board. It just seems to take forever gathering, doesn't it? And it's not my favorite task. Nonetheless, it does look very pretty when it's done. It's such a lovely day today. It's really nice to have some sunny, summery weather. It's just been lovely. So if you've been following me over the last few weeks or even months, you'll know that I've been moaning quite a lot about our British weather. We've had really cold spring and summer so far. So everyone is just loving this bit of sun that we've been having. Um, and my dog is loving it as well. <laughs> I don't know. There was a funny thing that came up on my Instagram the other day, actually, about dogs and the heat, because... We all worry about our dogs in the heat, don't we? We don't want them to overheat, especially if they're really fluffy like my little dog is. So we spend all this time trying to cool them down and keep them out of the sun. But any opportunity that they seem to have, dogs seem to be out there sunbathing, don't they? <laughs> so my dog loves water. Um, we don't have a paddling pool for him at the moment, but last year he spent the majority of the summer just going in and out of this little dog paddling pool that we got for him. Um, and we need to buy him a new one. But while we haven't got a dog paddling pool, we've just filled up this little sort of bucket of water and put it in the garden. And he just sits out there in the shade by this bucket of water. And now and again, he'll have a little play in it. It's really funny and really quite cute. So my children have actually grown out of the paddling pool now, but the dog still has one. So that's quite funny. Anyway, I'm going to get on with gathering these tears and I'll catch up with you once I've done that.
just here from here to here and then I've got the bottoms here which is really quite long. I cut the dress as long as I could, I basically went to the end of my fabric um, to use up everything that I had and also just to make sure that I had enough length because I'd rather have more length and then have to shorten than obviously be the other way around. So yeah, tears are in, I feel like that's the main part done. Obviously it's not really <laughs> because I've still got to do the button bands and also more gathering with the frills as well. I've given myself a lot of gathering to do today. Anyway, I'm going to have a little break now and go and have some lunch and things. It's about midday. Um, it took me a whole hour to do that gathering actually. I did time the process. I just wanted to see how long it would actually take me to do those bits because I always feel like it just takes so long. Um, and I was really trying to get my gathering even and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. And next I will be on to the neck band and button band, I think. So I'm back from a little bit of a break now. I just had some nice lunch in the garden. And even though it's really hot, the wind has really suddenly got up. So um, I felt a bit windswept after that. <laughs> it was really nice to sit outside for a while and I feel a little bit refreshed now after all that gathering, even though I now have more gathering to do. So I'm at the point now where I need to put on the shoulder sleeves or the shoulder frills I should say or do the armholes. I thought I was doing the button band next uh, but no, the pattern says to do the sleeves next. I don't think it really matters actually which way you do which but um, I will go with what the pattern says. So I've cut out my frills here so as I say these are from the Davenport pattern and I can't decide whether to double them so that they're kind of double sided so that when they do stick up you can see the fabric underneath or whether to just finish them and have the sleeves a little bit more drapey because I think if I double them it's obviously going to make them stick up a little bit more but it will be nice that you can see the underside of the fabric rather than just um you know that <laughs> if it does flick up the wrong way and I know that with my other Davenport dresses that does annoy me that sometimes if you don't iron the frills down properly they can stick up and then you can see the underside of the fabric so I think I've just answered my own question there and I'm going to have a go at doubling them so what I'm going to do is just sew two of these frills right sides together turn them through and press them and then just gather down the long edge and then I'll need to just attach them to the armhole and I didn't say at the beginning that I'm actually going to be bias binding the armholes so I'll need to bias bind the frill and the armhole at the same time but I'll show you a little bit more about how I do that when I get to it. Once my frills were all sewn together, I ran some gathering stitches down the straight edge, down the center point of the shoulder frill and attached it to my armhole. And then I just played around with the gathering to see how I liked the frill looking. So obviously because I'm kind of making this up as I go along, there isn't any points on the pattern to tell me how far across the gathers should go. So I'm just doing it by eye really and I'm going to make sure obviously that both of the frills look the same on both shoulders. So my shoulder frills are now on. So I've just tacked these in place and I've just quickly quickly tried this on just to make sure that I was happy with how they were sitting on my shoulder and whether or not they looked symmetrical. So can you see? <laughs> so I just tacked along the um, gathered edge, removed my original gathering stitches so that's just now tacked onto the armhole. So next I need to bias bind the armholes and this bit is a little bit tricky because I need to include the frill in the bias bound edges so it does get a little bit um, thick or puffy when you're trying to bias bind the armholes. But I did it this way with my Davenport I May Sleeveless and it worked really nicely because everything is then all enclosed really neatly. So the 
Darling Ranger's dress does already come with a bias binding piece because the neckline is bias bound. So what I've done is just cut more bias binding than I actually need um, because I'll also obviously be bias binding the armholes. So what I'm going to do now is just join all of my bias binding pieces together to make one long strip of bias binding which I can then use for the armholes and the neckline just to make sure that I've got enough for all of those things. I'm just going to pin the bias binding right sides together around the armhole starting at about a centimetre from the centre seam. Next I sewed all around the armhole starting at stopping at where I placed the first pins at about one centimetre away from the centre seam. Once you've sewn your binding around starting and stopping a centimetre from the seam, pull your binding out from under the machine and then place a pin that's where your centre seam would be. So what you want to do is just pinch together the remaining bits of binding like this and put a pin in like that. So this pin should actually match up with your centre seam, centre side seam. And then you want to sew your pieces of binding together along this seam here. And then when you've sewn your binding pieces together, you can open out that seam, just trim the ends off a little bit. And then when that's done, you can just open out that seam there and continue sewing around your armhole. And that just gives you a really nice, neat bias binding finish. So that when you flip it over, you've got no joins or anything obvious from the other side. Once that's all sewn in place, you can remove the tacking stitches from your um, shoulder frill if you want to, if you need to. And then what we need to do is just trim the seam allowance down as far as you can and then fold the binding underneath so that it's nice and neat from the inside. So my camera battery did actually die in the middle of that <laughs> so I had to stop filming it but I don't think I really needed to anyway so what I've done is I need to neaten these up a little bit there's still a few sort of um, ends that I need to trim off and everything but I'm going to leave that to the end but I've sewn on my bias binding on the underside now. So that's what it looks like in the inside, it's all nice and neat and then the frill just hangs really nicely on the shoulder. I'm so pleased with how that's looking and I'm really pleased that I went with the like lined frill, the double sided frill because it hasn't weighted it down too much at all. It just drapes really nicely. This fabric is lovely. It's got a really lovely silky texture to it. So it feels really nice and it drapes really well as well. So next I'm on to finishing the neckline and also doing the button band. So that really is the main last bit of the dress. And then obviously I do need to do the buttons and the hem and try everything on as well. Hi everyone, so it's a couple of days later now and I've managed to finish my dress. So I think the last bit that I filmed was actually where I was putting in the neck band and the bottom band or the neck binding, I should say. So since then, all I've done is just to hem the dress and to put the buttons in, the buttonholes and the buttons. <laughs> So I've literally just sat or stood actually on my ironing board sewing in 10 buttons because there were so many buttons to put in this dress. So I did put in a little clip of me trying it on. Um, so as you'll see, the dress did turn out quite long. So it really is maxi length on me with no heels, um, which is fine. And I really like that length. So it worked out really well in the end that I didn't even need to really shorten anything. I turned up one inch hem. Uh, or 2.5 centimeters so I've left it quite long and um, I'm gonna see how I go with that obviously with heels it will be the right length but if I just end up wearing this as a summer dress I might end up shortening it even more I'll see how I feel in it so I'll just show you the finished dress it is long <laughs> 
So I am absolutely thrilled with how this turned out, actually. I really love the style of it. I love the flutter sleeves with the Darling Ranger's dress. I think it works really nicely and it just looks really pretty. And I think these, even though I have lined these flutters, they hang really nicely. And it just works really well as a sleeveless dress. And yeah, I'm really happy with how the tiers turned out as well. I had just the right amount of gather there. I wasn't sure whether to increase the width of the bottom tier by two and a half times or two times. So I'm really glad that I went with two times because I think there's just the right amount of gather in there. You wouldn't necessarily want too much. It would be too poofy. So yeah, absolutely thrilled with how that turned out and also just to mention that I did put the um, waist ties in at the back to say so that I can bring it in at the waist if I want to, which I probably will because I think with such a lot of fabric, it does look nice if it's brought in a little bit at the waist. So I'm really pleased that I managed to get that dress done in two days. It's all ready for the wedding now. So at the end of this video, I will just put in a couple of images. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. I really hope it's inspired you to have a go at combining some of the patterns that you already own to make something that you might have seen on the high streets or for a wedding or an occasion or something similar. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And if you have enjoyed this video, then give it a like as well. Liking the video just lets me know that you've enjoyed it and it helps me to know whether or not I should make more of these kinds of videos. Take care everyone, have a lovely day and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.